Okay, and welcome back everyone to Box Office Report. Today on the 13th of October, 2024, and man, <laughs> I, 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 I don't know if I've ever really miscalced a box office this bad before. Um, Terrifier 3 made it to the number one spot this week with $18.3 million. That's impressive for multiple reasons we'll get to in a little bit. The Wild Robot had the number two spot with $13.4 million. It's clearly getting some legs going. And then you have Joker Filet Do, making $7.05 million, $5 million dropping 81.3% before the actuals actually come in. That could go up a staggering amount. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, not surprisingly, it's in the top five still. A little over $7 million, dropping still only about 30.5%. And then piece by piece, the new Lego movie, which I'm going to tell you right now, for all the animated stuff I see, because I have a viewer who likes it when I see the animated stuff, wants my opinion on it, that's not what I'm going to see. Uh, it barely got any sort of play on, like, in terms of, like, trailers. I barely knew it was existing. So between everything going on, that's, that's one I'm just going to have to say, no, I'm not going to check out. Uh, but that's your top five. Terrifier 3. Okay, I double-checked what this movie's made on, first and foremost. It's made, only made on $2 million. I think I saw one trailer for it. That's not to say it wasn't getting marketing. I'm just saying I only saw one trailer for it. So my guess is on a $2 million budget, you would be lucky to see $5 million in marketing. Uh, the original Terrifier made like... Why don't we just look this up right now? Terrifier. Uh, <laughs> to parody and say, I'm not terrified, I just got a movie about you. Uh, so anyway, uh, Terrifier. All right, so you got the three Terrifier movies. The first one that looks was made on like a budget of like 400 grand, like half a million. Yeah, um, made no, it wasn't even, it was made on like less than that, made a lot more of its budget back. Then the next one, that's it, the next one was made on like half a million. And went on to make, uh, let's see here, went on to make 15 million, so it made bank. And now you got the most recent one, which they put the most budget behind, already making its money back in spades. It made all of it back, because do the math, at probably a $5 million marketing budget, you're looking at a film on $7 million. The film only had to make $11 million, honestly, to break even, and <laughs> it did that easily. So, this will easily be one of the most profitable, if we're talking just percentage-wise, films that's going to come out this year. But why? What happened here that allowed Terrifier 3, of all things, to be number one? And Joker for Leia do, even with bad reviews, bad word of mouth, all that, to drop 81%. Well, let's look at the Terrifier, Terrifier Part 3, or Part 3, Terrifier 3 Part first. Then we'll talk about the Joker part with Joker. I think this has quickly become a cult following kind of film. It's not universally, like, loved. This still isn't the new Michael Myers, Freddy Krueger, or anything like that. Art the Clown is not the next slasher in that pantheon yet. Although with these numbers, just for an opening weekend against that budget, that might need to be relooked. But he's, it's quickly become a film series that the fans of horror, at least, really are enjoying really like and are coming back wind droves with multiple fans with more people so i think that plays a big factor plus we're now in mid-october roughly speaking uh so we're in the halloween season so something that is halloween oriented is definitely gonna seek a bit more of an appeal than something that isn't add on the fact that joker 2 didn't do very well and i think you had the recipe for a film to really succeed now it clearly i think overperformed based on the little i was hearing but still, I think that's why you can reasonably say Terrifier 3 performed the way it did and outperformed everything else fairly competently. Uh, the Wild Robot made our 13.4 million, dropping only 37%. Right now it's at 148, 148 million against a $78 million budget. Now it still needs to hit about 190 to be an, uh, to break even, more or less. But if we look at the weekend to weekend right now, the numbers are in its favor. Opened on 35, only dropped 47.2, then dropped less than 30. It's clear that the word of mouth has gotten out in this film. It's having extremely good drop-offs. 
Now, I'm not saying it's got another 52 left in, or no, actually, it'd be about 42 left in the tank. I don't know about that because it's at 13.4 million. If it drops, say, let's just get rounded up to 30, that would mean it would drop about 13.9. Let's just say 4 million. That means it'd be about 9 million next week, which would be great. It would be a, that'd be a great number. Add that on to what we already got right now, nothing else right now, 148, you're saying that's 157, it's probably going to be about 160, not including any international numbers, but that's assuming we can get more international numbers, because it's not going to be the domestic that brings the wild robot home, it's not going to be the one that, it's not going to be the, the numbers that help bring it over the finish line, it will be the international at this point. Unfortunately, it just didn't open to a strong enough number to allow itself to get to that point. Uh, if it opened even at, like, say, 40 million, we'd actually be having a very different conversation. Because our, if I were to, let me get back to those numbers real quick again. First off, I'd have to add another 5 million on there. That'd make it for, uh, 153. Uh, then we're talking about dropping where it dropped here. I mean, that's still another 2-ish million. Not even. It would be, let's see, 47%. We'd be looking at somewhere along the lines of like 23 million, which is about another 5 million added onto there again. Uh, then we'd be looking at less than 30 on that. So you'd be looking at a film that drops again, maybe uh, to 18 ish million, 17 ish million, which means that you're again adding another five. So you'd be already adding 15 million, not even including the day and the day to days onto the current number, which would already put it at 163, which means we would be we would be in a much more comfortable place. But we're not. This is all hypotheticals. Will Wild Robot make its money back? I think it's still a possibility. We saw Ninja Turtles do it, so we saw like migration do it. So nothing's out of the realm of possibility. Add on to the fact that there are no kid friendly films coming out until Moana 2. If I remember correctly. And when I say kid friendly films, I do mean in the avenue of animation. In fact, that if nothing else, that is a really big advantage the Wild Robot has right now, is that there's no competition for it. Nothing is challenging this thing's title for the top kid animated uh, you know, film uh, currently out right now. Uh, even Inside Out 2 and uh, Spickle Fiend 4 are, I think, gone now from the theaters. I'll actually, uh, let me check the worldwide real quick here. Did they get anything else here? No, that's done, and Spickle Fiend 4 crossed the 960 marker. Good for it, but no, it's done too. All right, now for the second half of the coin here. Joker, Filet Adu, dropped 81.3 for the estimate right now. I don't know if the estimate is going to be the exact, or it's going to maybe be a little bit lower of a drop, or a little bit more of a drop. I looked into the biggest drops, second weekend drops in cinematic history, this still actually doesn't, this barely cut, tracks the top 20. There are still about like 17 more films, give or take, that have had bigger drops than this than the second week. But the fact is, it still ranks as one of the highest drops in cinematic history. Out of the hundreds of thousands, if not closing in on millions of films, millions of films that ever existed, it's still within the 20 number. It's still within the top 20. So it's still one of the largest drop-offs ever. Now... You might have thought, maybe, that there could have been some hope for this movie with the international. Because it opened worldwide with like 123, 25, 26, something like that, million dollars. That was its opening worldwide. Clearly, that is not going to be the case. Because it looks like it blew all its international load on the first number. Um, on the first, on the opening weekend. Unless it's got a couple places it's not going to be uh, releasing. Because let me see what the all-time... Uh, what, what Joker's actual, you know, number is here. Joker. Boop. Let's see what that, uh, like, its actual balance here is. It's, it had, had 335 domestically and 400, I'm sorry, I was going to say 400, 743 internationally. So it made the bulk of its money internationally, but it still was made only on like $65 million. So even if it had just the domestic run, it would have been a very huge success. That is clearly not going to be the case here, unless there's some markets that are going to really help it out that haven't uh, that hasn't opened up in yet. 165 million. There's actually a really legitimate chance this film does not see 200 million. It's 35 million dollars. It's not even 35 million dollars away, and there's an actual chance this film does not see 200 million dollars. Which, by the by. 
is what the movie is made on. <laughs> like, there's, it's one thing in a sequel raising the price. Raising the, uh, the budget you gotta put on. Actors have it in their contracts to get more for if they're doing sequels or not. It makes complete sense. Uh, you know, you want to put more effort. And, you know, it was supposed to be a, it was a musical. Or allegedly, it's supposed to be a musical. So, you know, make these sets. these I get it. Makes sense. It's $65 million, I get it. If they had maybe done just $100 million, I could have understood it. Even doubling it to, like, say, one thirty still makes sense. And for someone like Joaquin, who doesn't normally do sequels, you're probably going to have to put a little bit more uh, cheddar on the potato, if you will, for your big potato. You're going to have to put, give him a little bit more cash to get him back. I get that completely. What I do not comprehend is how this film was more than three times the budget of the original. That's your first freaking mistake. Uh, well, your first mistake is you just shouldn't have made the movie. But if you were going to make the movie, put the time and care into the script uh, and the story because it's clear that the vision was not there. And, the way we, and what we've actually recently learned doesn't really help. A, um, again, script wasn't there. B, and I heard someone saying, like, this is what people blaming Lady Gaga. Like, this is what happens when you add this chick in here or you add a woman or someone. It's like, okay, shut the fuck up. That's not what the problem was. If anything, Harley Quinn is portrayed by Lady Gaga is one of the least decent things about the film. Mind you, I don't... <sighs> what they were trying to do with her character, I could have seen work in a better film. But as it stands, I liked... She was at least more interesting than Joaquin Phoenix was. Uh, she, her performance was perfectly fine. Even Joaquin, Phoenix, uh, Joaquin Phoenix's performance was perfectly fine. What they were trying to do with her, and what, like kind of like what the story was with her, I, like, I don't know if people care if I spoil it. I don't want to spoil it yet. I'll wait, like, I'll wait till November, because at that point no one's going to give a rat. I don't think anyone gives a rat's ass right now, to be honest. But people even kind of spoiled a little bit of what I was trying to not bring up in the comment section, but frankly, I don't think anyone's going to care. So, you know what? I, I won't, like, say, talk about the ending, but at least talk about her character. The idea of a Harley Quinn trying to manipulate, being the more manipulative of the, jo of, between her and the Joker, like, the one who's kind of more influencing Joker is Harley Quinn, is an idea that's actually cool, and with a really good, and with a better script, would have worked. Like, in the, especially with this iteration of the Joker we had, but as it stands, it just doesn't work because none of this ultimately ends up in any place, really. Her character doesn't really end up in any good place or any bad place. She doesn't end up in anywhere, really. And he's... Now, that part I'll leave. But the, what we do with him, I, it just doesn't work. But Harley Quinn was not the problem. Even Joaquin was not the problem. The problem really is that, A, they shouldn't have done the film. But if they had, they should have had a better script. The idea of the shared madness and the musical aspects could have been interesting, but it just was not executed in a way that worked. You, at points, had the, the idea is that the musicals are in their head, but sometimes they're literally just singing. So, and the musical part is just, like, what is, ugh. and then obviously the story beats and the ending and the reveals, it just did not work. And it's one of those few films that does actually lessen the film that came before it because of what you did here. Unless you're going to try to do, like, the whole season five, one through five, the Supernaturals are the only canon seasons. Or we pretend, like, the Jody, uh, what, the Jody, was it, Whitaker series of Doctor Who doesn't happen. I was going to do something like that, which, look, I, I don't, I never really liked that mentality, to be frank. If those are the season parts of the series you like and just want to choose to ignore, like, you just don't want to, uh, you know, watch the other stuff, that's fine. But the stuff was made. Like, those series, those seasons were made. It was all made. So, um, it's like, people don't want to acknowledge the prequels or the sequels, for that matter, of Star Wars. They're made. They're canon, whether you like it or not. It's like, no, they're not canon. Yes, they are canon. The fact that you want to try to keep arguing that doesn't make them any less canon. It just makes you inflexible and unwilling to accept the reality. That's all it is. Now, granted, with Star Wars, there's a lot of BS with their canon, so I mean, that's still one I can give at least a little pass. I still don't like people who are so abstinent about it. I've been, I'm going on tangent now, but I had I had a guy 
who I actually knew from my local card shop, who did watch the channel, maybe he's watching the channel right now, who was, like, trying to argue how he didn't like the fact they were making the new Child's Play series with Chucky, the one where he was a little robot doll instead of a possessed doll. I'm like, well, look, it doesn't stop them from making, and he's just kind of giving me these, not, he's just nodding his head, or nodding his head, shaking his head, like, no, it just, it just hurts the other series from being made, it's like, Dude, they weren't going to put the other series in theaters. They never were going to do that. All of his stuff was going direct to DVD at this point. And then you get a series, which apparently was pretty good. I never watched it. So, But he was just kind of just being obstinate about Like, dude, this is a problem with fan... I didn't say this. I didn't get resonant. I didn't want to... Because I didn't want to suck. Because I'd known the guy for a while. But I didn't want to really get all... Because I wasn't looking for an argument either. He just kind of started to get into like that... What's the best way to put it? That defiant fandom who then doesn't want to accept the reality. And I'm like, ugh, like, look, dude, this I'm not I don't want to try to like insult you or hurt your feelings, but this is a fucking problem with fandom. You gotta be able to accept certain facts. And the facts were that we hadn't had a child's play movie, Chucky movie, in theaters since the seed of Chucky a decade ago. And then I know this was back then, like over a decade ago. And that his sequels had just been re relegated to DVD stuff. He's got a TV show, looking good, but the fact is that times change and everything, even films I love, will eventually be remade in some capacity. Star Wars, Indiana Jones, will eventually be remade in capacity, in some capacity, at some point down the line when enough time has passed. Because things age, times go, actors go on, new actors come in, and generations either uh, forget these things exist, or they just have forgotten how good they are. So... Sometimes a sequel can allow you to you appreciate the previous film even more. I went on a tangent. I apologize. This happens sometimes. Uh, but there's sometimes things I just want to get off my chest. And like, it literally just cut. Point being, the Joker, Joker 2 sucked. It will be on my worst films of the year list. I don't know if it's the worst film of the year for me, but it's certainly higher up there. Uh, but then we go to Beelgeous Beelgeous, one of the more entertaining films that's come out in the last couple months. Uh, Beelgeous, Beelgeous, man, there's 77 esque million dollars. That's what I was trying to say. Made 420 million. There is literally nothing more I can say about this film, except it's now in, it's now got in the point of the year where it's decreases are going to be slowed thanks to the time of year, because it's October and the Halloween season. That is going to aid it so well. And it's like time on the box office charts. So 420, I guess the question that I get, oh, I guess the question then is, where do we think this film's going to land? It's already at 420. I don't see it hitting half a million. That I don't see happening. Could it end maybe 440? There are 20 million, maybe? I don't think that's impossible. I don't even really see 450. Another 30 million, because at this point, it's all domestic. I don't see, like, yeah, 450 happening, but maybe 440? Well, I don't know. We'll see. Not that it really needs it at this point. Like, everything else now is literally just sprinkles on top of the sundae. It's now just, you know, gravy on the potatoes. Put your gravy on the sundae and sprinkles on the potatoes. See what happens. Um, but no. Piece by piece, 3.8 million. It, like, look, there's a reason these films no longer... Uh, a vibrant journey through the life of Pharrell Williams told through the lens of Lego animation. Uh, so, this is a... Ant it's an animated biography, comedy family musical, about Pharrell Williams, told in Lego form? Interesting. I was wondering why we were focusing so much on, like, rappers doing the voices of characters, but I guess that's the reason. Huh. But, like I said, there is a reason these films don't do well anymore. They, the people, like, just, the Lego movie and, like, the Lego Batman were kind of, like, flashes in the pan. They they really were lightning in a bottle. They were they were great movies. I even liked the second one quite a lot, the Lego movie. But then you got uh, the Lego Ninjago movie. I think there was like another one that came out too, and none of these hit. None of these landed like they did. People thought, oh, we're gonna keep making the Lego movies. They no, no, we're not. They just aren't this. They aren't the appeal. Uh, the Lego movie was really novelty as it was. So unfortunately, that's one I'm not gonna be catching. Uh, it, it is what it is, but yeah, I've also kind of lost my like appeal for the Lego movies too. Not to say if like a, one of the big, like I didn't see Ninja, I didn't even see Lego Batman in theaters when I uh, when it came out. I think there was <laughs> something else that came out that month, week that I saw over it. 
<coughs> when I heard the Lego Batman movie, it was actually pretty cool. Then we get Transformers 1, our 3.6 million. Currently over 100 million. That's good. Uh, at $75 million budget, it still has to hit like almost one almost 190 not quite 190 but uh like somewhere in the neighborhood of 190 to break even it will not be doing that which again we've talked about why i think that didn't work out i think transformers just aren't as popular as they once were they but more importantly they the movies prior have not been good uh, we had the first movie that did really well, and they all made, a lot of them made money, let's be clear there, it's not like they were financial bombs, all of them, like, several of them made a billion dollars, whether they should have not, should have or not, that's a different question entirely, but, yeah, you had between the second and the fifth one, you had just the same bullcrap over and over and over again, and, like, the audience finally caught on, with the last night where the other two had made a billion, this one dropped only for like 600. It barely broke even. And then you had Bumblebee, which actually, shocker, has a story to it. And good characters, human and um, Autobot-wise. And it was basically like a boy in their car kind of story. Well, in this case, girl in their car with Ailey Seifeld. So it was actually really, uh, it was actually a really solid little film. It was probably arguably the best of them up until that point. But the stink of Michael Bay, the stink of the original series still carried over, which is why then Rise of the Beast, which went, still went back a bit more to the Michael Bay roots, uh, didn't overly do well. Still made over $400 million, but that wasn't really enough, I think, to break even. Or if it was, it was just kind of barely there. Uh, but it, honestly, it was probably the best before, since Bumblebee. Um, not since Bumblebee, but it was probably the best apart from Bumblebee. Uh, we weren't, the humans were at least more likable. It really wasn't that bad. And then we got this, which is probably one of the best ones we had, and it's just, yeah. I also made the argument that because schools were back in session, the kids weren't available to just be going to the theaters as often. So, I think that may have played a factor in it, too. Saturday Night debuted with, well, wide release debut with 3.4 million, 4.18 million total worldwide. Uh, look, this is going to be on my best films of the year list. This was a fantastic movie. This was fantastic. I don't know if there's like an Academy Award or like performance. Like, I don't think you're going to get best actor because, because there's no clear lead actor. Like Michael Keaton being nominated for Birdman was one thing. It's, this has some, definitely some tropes of Birdman in there in terms of style, but he was our lead focal character. The only one who's our really lead uh, focal character is Michael Lauren, uh, who I can't remember the actor's name playing him. But even then, I don't think that he's going to be getting, like, an Oscar nomination or anything. I don't think. But who knows? Maybe. Uh, still a great movie. Still one of the most scathing comebacks I've ever heard in a uh, in a movie. Like, holy crap! That was harsh and awesome. Um, the And then we have My, My Hero Academia, You're Next. I've had someone constantly tell me it's in theaters. I'm probably not going to be catching it. A, yes, I finished the series. But A... I don't really go out to the anime movies usually anymore. Like, I did it for Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Super Broly and Dragon Ball Super Superhero. And I like My Hero Academia a lot. I haven't really kept up with the anime. I know where we are in the anime, but I have not kept up with it, really. I don't know. I've just, I've never seen any of the movies in the theater, and I've just, I don't know. So I've got other things I need to be doing, and plus I need to be saving some money now for a new car, so I can't can't be spending as much money going to the theaters as I would like. At least not out of, like, my other savings, which I don't normally do anyway. Uh, so, anywho, uh, that being said, you also got Nightmare Before Christmas, and re-release gets $2.3 million. Apparently, I checked this. Do you know what the original Nightmare Before Christmas opened up with? No joke. Only, like, a few hundred grand. And it went on to be a beloved classic. How about ugh, How about that? Uh, the Apprentice, the story about uh, Donald Trump, uh, 1.5 million, especially Stan playing him, um, 1.5 million, I don't know if that's going to really, you know, make any real money. Speak No Evil, though, made 1.5 million and has quietly crossed the $70 million mark, $73 million. Now, again, on a $15 million budget, you got to factor at least $20 million in marketing. The film, luckily, made its money back pretty pretty handily as of last week it was in the 60s it was clearly in the profitable range at that point because even if i went 25 million which i'm not sure i would 
I'll see if I can find the actual budget when the end of the year comes. Mark, uh, production budget, that is. No, sorry, marketing budget. But it, look, even if we round it all the way up to 40 million total between production and marketing, it still made its money back last week. And at this point, it's now just taking what little profit it can get, which good for it. Everything I heard, it was not bad. That wasn't like amazing, but it wasn't bad. The substance made another 1.1 million, 24.7 million dollars against probably what is a very, very minimal budget. That is, that's good numbers for that. And apparently it's one of Demi Moore's best roles in years. Average Joe, I don't know if this is based on, it's Fathom Events. I, and Maureen becomes a high school coach, to, uh, become, sorry, who becomes a high school to coach, takes a legal stand to defend freedom and religious liberty for everyone. I do not care. <laughs> it's one of those movies where I do not care. White Bird, seven, uh, Look, I, if I remember correctly, this has Helen Mirren in it. Um, it's based, actually, I'm thinking about a book series. And, look, I think, honestly, your problem was you kept, you pushed this film off. That was the problem. This film got pushed off. Because I remember this film being advertised last year. And it got pushed off. Same with the bike riders. I think your biggest problem is in the quality of film. I don't know what the film's currently got rating, but I don't think it's a quality film. It's the fact that you pushed it off too long. Deb and Wolverine made a little, a little over uh, three quarters of a million this week. One billion three hundred thirty-three million dollars. It's pretty done. It's look. Hats off to Deadpool and Wolverine. You went on to make more than anyone ever expected. Would I like to have seen you cross, like say, the Avengers or something like that? Oh, absolutely, I would have. Would I have loved to have been the first R-rated film ever to be a two billion dollar film? Absolutely, I would have. I don't think we'll ever see our two billion R-rated film. The very nature of an R-rated film just, I think, negates the ability for that. Whereas PG-13, PG films, all those, anyone can go. Whereas R-rated does, clearly, it's restricted. You are restricted. So, unfortunately, I don't think we'll ever see a two billion dollar film that's an R-rated film. But, doesn't really matter. Uh, it, it made its money back. I think it is also firmly planted as the, I think it was like the 25th first highest grossing film of all time i think let's let's check seeing as we're pretty much done now in the box office this week uh let's see now lifetime grosses deadpool and wolverine stands as the 21st and okay wait a minute wait a minute hold on it can actually cross one last record it's got one last record to cross in it maybe it's literally <laughs> it's literally uh, a million and like 300 grand away from crossing the 20th spot worldwide. All time. Okay, it's got one more in it. Can it do it? Can it do it? Deadpool! Yes, it can. Come on, Deadpool. You got one more in the tank, man. One more. <laughs> then watch it turn out. It gets like 10 million from like one more release. And it crosses the 19th highest. Like... Okay, now can I get 18? Um, <laughs> I don't think... No. Uh, if if it's somehow still able to manage the 20th, it's done at that rate. But again, I don't know. Maybe there is one more sp like international spot where it did not get a release. Anything's possible the way these international re releases work. But look, number 21, even if it just stays there, it look, it blew away every expectation. Highest grossing opening of the year. Um... Highest grossing July opening, highest grossing R-rated opening, highest grossing uh, opening of Ryan Reynolds' career, Hugh Jackman's career. Am I missing anything here? Why don't we find out? Um, let's see here. Weekend records here real quick. Let's actually see where all of Deadpool's uh, records really kind of land to, to end death this out today. Let's see here. Um, okay, so Deadpool's not part of those. It is not part of these records. All studios, not part of those records. Uh, not part of those records, not part of those records. But what it is part of, it is the highest opening July, a uh, movie of July of all time, by a nice, chunky 20 million. That's going to take some effort to beat. Not impossible, it's going to take some effort to beat. Highest sum, or highest opening for a summer movie. Now keep in mind, summer, at least the way they de the, uh, determine summer, seems to be from May to i want to say august yeah august may to august that's what they determine summer so it's got the op uh, highest opening weekend record for a summer movie of all time just being out jurassic world by about three million 
Then you go into R rated. It's got the highest rated R rated film of all time opening weekend. Then after that, that's really all the major records. But if we're going to go even further, it's the highest opening weekend for Hugh Jackman, highest opening weekend for Ryan Reynolds, highest opening weekend, honestly, for anyone in that movie, save for Happy Hogan, John Favreau. <laughs> that is only because of association, adventure adjacent, adjacent if you will. Um, otherwise, uh, oh, and then Chris Evans, because obviously Chris Evans is Captain America. But apart from those two, who are minor roles, obviously, but still, um... I, I know it's probably got a couple other records under its belt, too, that I'm just not... It's highest. Uh, it's the highest-grossing R-rated film of all time. Uh, it's the highest-grossing film right now of 2024. So it is it is cemented, honestly, in film history at this point. Le legit cemented. So with that being said, what about the next uh, film? we got an unknown title allegedly opening wide this week. I highly doubt that's it, but from Universal, no less. I don't actually think that's happening but who knows no the big release this week is going to be smile 2 now i was confident that joker 2 would still be able to make um uh make the number one spot this week i was clearly wrong because i underestimated how big the drop was going to be for joker 2 and i overestimated terrifier i didn't even have terrifier on the list honestly uh but you know if they make terrifier 4 which based on these numbers you know damn well they will uh, you better believe I'll have to at least consider Terrifier 4 next time it's on uh, coming out. But I do feel confident that Smile 2, based on... Let's actually look up the original Smile real quick. Smile, though your heart is breaking. Smile. Uh -huh. Okay. It was a bizarre incident. Okay. It opened 22 million. Solid opening. If you don't think the sequel which has had good trailers. Let's be fair. It's had good trailers. It might be crap, but it's had good trailers. Uh, and if you don't think that, that's fine. By the way, I just want to point out that if you think something sucks, that's fine. But use your words carefully. Someone, when I talked about Agatha uh, and how what I thought about it halfway through, someone did comment that Agatha is blatantly bad, but that's just my opinion. You're entitled to not like it. I, I should know. You are entitled to not like it. But I would just be careful how you use your words because blatantly means... If someone is blatantly showing disregard for rules, they're doing it on purpose. This show, if it's bad, is not bad on purpose. I think you're, I think you're, you're not choosing your grammar for your, uh, your words properly on that one. Um, now, if you, if you don't like it, that's fine. Just, I would just be careful how you choose your words. That's all, because people will, will misunderstand what you're saying. Uh, but no, I, twenty two, the first film. Second one's probably going to have a bigger opening. I'm not saying it's going to have like a $50 million opening. I don't know what's tracking right now. But 30 is not out of the table. Maybe not even 40. I definitely think it's going to have a bigger opening weekend. And it's going to be more than Terrifier. So I, I think that's fair to say. The question simply comes down to what's the drop off for Terrifier 3 going to be like? Unfortunately, looking up a movies in terms of what they drop, what their drop offs were like. Are, is difficult on Rotten Tomatoes. Let me see if I can just find uh, Terrifier um, uh, the, the Terrifier 2. Let's find Terrifier 2 here. Will it give me the... See, it gives me the performance. It doesn't give me weekend drop-offs. And once you like a film is out of theaters, it just doesn't do that anymore, which I find really annoying. Oh, but we're in Halloween season. Uh, even if it drops, just say, under 50, that would, I think, put it just over the Wild Robot. Especially, if the, but that's assuming Wild Robot still takes a 30% drop. I will say this. I'll go in my gut right now. I will say Smile 2. I'll say Terrifier 3. Then I'm definitely going to go Wild Robot. Then I'm going to go Beetlejuice. And then I'll probably go Joker for Leia 2. Uh, so again, just recap. Smile 2, Terrifier 3, The Wild Robot, Beetlejuice, Joker. I might be dead wrong on this. We'll find out in the long term. Until then, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, share, subscribe. And I will see you folks for the next one.